Hi, my name is Rich Newman. I'm one of the founders of Sub2R, and I'd like to introduce you to our camera. This is an open architecture camera, and by that we mean we wanted to give the user as much access to the imaging process as possible from the moment the light enters the lens until it leaves the camera. We also wanted to make this a really high quality prosumer camera, meaning we wanted to give you broadcast quality at an affordable price. So in this video, we're going to show you all the wonderful things that are inside this camera. And with that, let's tear it down. First, a couple of basics about the camera. It weighs in at 420 grams, so just under 15 ounces. It's 33 millimeters tall. It's 109 millimeters side to side. And front to back, it's 93 millimeters. Before I tear it apart, a couple of things I want to point out on the front. We have dual onboard microphones. We have an RGB LED indicator and interchangeable 12 millimeter optics. So when you look at the back side of this camera, you realize it's not your ordinary camera. You've got auxiliary power in, you've got auxiliary IO ports, you've got a USB 3.1C port, you've got an ethernet connector, and you have an auxiliary IO port. And the auxiliary IO port will allow you to attach something like a set of headphones with a boom mic and now you're connected directly to the camera. Okay, so now we're going to take this thing apart. First thing we're going to do is remove the lens, just unscrews, and then we're going to remove the four screws that hold the front plate on. So now that the screws are removed, front plate comes off and inside you'll see the camera board. The camera board has the two microphones on either side. It's got the indicator uh, LED and the lens holder and image sensor. There are also two screws that hold the camera board in place. Once those screws are removed, you can remove the camera board and this is replaceable so that you can swap out uh, different image sensors. This is a says 1080p. It's actually a 4k board And you can swap them from the camera chip for another size a 720p a monochromatic whatever you want Now that that's been removed the top and the bottom plate can be removed together And now you've got Basically the motherboard and the memory connected together. So we've removed the passive cooler off the SODIM for this uh, part, and the camera comes stock with a four gig uh, memory card, but the memory card can be removed and upgraded to up to eight gigs if you want uh, more memory on board, if your application requires greater processing. When we designed the sub to our camera, we wanted to give the user as much control over the imaging process as possible from the moment the light hits the camera until it leaves the camera. And it all begins when the light enters the lens. We chose a 12 millimeter lens because you can get very high quality lenses. They're very affordable. They're much better optical quality than a one millimeter or pinhole lens that you might find on a mobile device and far more affordable than a 25 millimeter lens that you would find on a scientific or professional type camera. We've made it easy to change the lenses. They simply unscrew and you can screw a new lens in and that's as easy as it is to change the optics. It's also easy to change filters on the, on the camera because notice this one has the IR cutout filter on it and this lens comes without. Now we're looking at the camera board and there's a lot of things that are going on in the camera board. First, I'm going to point out the microphones. We have two studio quality sub 26 dB mics. And in keeping with the spirit of the entire configurability of the camera, the microphone boards can be removed. And you can either replace them, upgrade them, or you can use these channels for low bandwidth data. So if you want to record, say, temperature, or pressure or some other bit of information from a sensor and have that information interlaced with video stream, you can use these pins to connect 
directly to uh, the, the camera and then allow that data to be interlaced with the video stream. Also on the camera board, you'll notice here is an RGB LED. This allows you to configure the indicator light. And if you're gonna put the camera in a housing, for instance, for an ROV or maybe a drone, and you wanna be able to see what the status of the camera is and be able to make that status something that's important to you, you can program this, L uh, this uh, LED to give you that information. And then finally, on the board we have your uh, image sensor here. This is a native 4K image sensor, although the board says 1080p. We had these uh, silk screen before we actually upgraded all of our first production boards to 4K. One of the many aspects we built into this camera is the ability to swap the camera board itself. And what this means is it's the board that contains the sensor. And if you get a 1080p camera, maybe you want a 4K camera or a 720p because it has different characteristics that you need, you don't have to buy a brand new camera. You just buy a new camera board and upgrade. And the camera boards snap out. And on the back side, you'll notice that there are two banks of 50 IO pins. These connect the camera board directly to the FPGA. And we also give you uh, 20 pins of user configurable I.O. This is important because it gives you the ability to add your own controls to what's going on on the camera board. We put them on with the anticipation that somebody might want to add powered optics. And this would include power zoom, power focus, uh, powered iris, uh, mechanical IR cutout, maybe a mechanical shutter, but you're not limited to that. These are user configurable IO pins that you can define and support whatever projects you want to explore and play with. So now we're looking at the top side of the FPGA board and at the heart of this is a Xilinx FPGA. We use this to be able to control and process the onboard compression, our ISP functions, and if you want to add your own functions, you can do that. You can also replace our uh, code with your own. So if you want to try writing your own demosaicing algorithms, you want to write your own compression algorithms, you have some kind of motion detection or object recognition uh, functionality you want to put into the camera itself, you have the ability to program the FPGA and put your own programs on board. We also have uh, Cypress FX3, which drives the uh, input-output functions over the USB 3, and we're using a Marvell chip to do the same thing and control the uh, Gig E I/O. So now we're looking at the back side of the board, and we've tried to think of as many different ways to connect the outside world to the camera as possible. And we've got an auxiliary power, we've got an auxiliary I/O port, we have USB, we've got a Gig E, we've got a 3.5 millimeter four-pole audio jack. And we've added this auxiliary power because there may not be enough power from your USB from the host or over Gig E, and you may be driving your own projects that require more, more power than either of those could pro provide. So we've given you a, a 5 volt, 3 amp auxiliary input. This next connector is really interesting. It's an 8 pin auxiliary I.O. connector. And its first function gives you direct access to the timing features on the CMOS sensor itself. So if you want to sync the camera to something, if you want to strobe trigger from the camera, if you want to have um, power standby, power up, power down of the chip itself, all that can be accessed directly through this. Now over here, you'll see a row of JTAG connectors. What we're going to do with those in the next version is we're going to replace those with jumpers. Those jumpers will allow you to use this auxiliary I.O. connector to get directly to the FX3 and the FPGA for programming when you're not using the USB for programming. We chose a USB 3.1C connector because it's universal. There's no up or down. So it's, you can't make a mistake when you plug it in. Your typical RJ45 Gig E connector. And the last one, the auxiliary audio port. 
When we went and talked to the Twitch streamers, we said, hey, what do you want? And they said, we want to be able to plug a headset directly into a camera. I said, okay, well, what does that mean? It means that you have to have this device look like a stereo output from the host, which we did. And then we take the, the mono input from the boom mic and we can split that equally into two channels. Those two channels are then interlaced with the video stream like the onboard audio is. And then we give you the controls on board to be able to pick which channel and control the individual gains on those audio channels. So now we're looking actually at the underside of the FPGA board. And you'll notice here that we have a bank of SODIM memory. We're using high speed memory because we're doing onboard compression for 1080p and, and 4K. This memory is upgradable. This particular piece here happens to be four gig. If you needed more memory, you can upgrade to eight. Or if you're doing a function on the camera that doesn't need memory or doesn't have as much compression requirements, you can drop this down to lower memory or no memory at all, depending upon your application. You'll also notice that these are the two 50 IO pin connectors to the camera board. And then you'll notice this connector here, this is a PTO connector. And one of the things I hate when you have a project like that, that you're working on and you want to find power that you can use to say power your own project, you know, your own device. Maybe it's a Bluetooth uh, or Wi-Fi uh, module you want to put on here. You're always tapping around and looking for you know, some place where you can get power and then you have to solder wire to the backside of a cap or a resistor. You're worried about damaging the board, etc. So what we've done is we've given you this bank of connectors down here and this is actually isolated regulated power it's two and a half and five volts this gives you the ability to power your own projects right on the camera board itself okay this is my favorite part in the entire camera because it looks like a spaceship i love it the so dims are going to run really fast and really hot when we're doing the 4k compression and to passively cool them we had to have a really sophisticated passive cooling device. This takes the heat off the SO dims on the bottom side of the FPGA board and runs them to the side extrusions to get the heat out as fast as possible. When we designed the housing, we had three main criteria that we wanted to keep to. And that was that the housing had to first be strong, so it would protect the camera in whatever environment you could put it into. It had to be an integrated heat sink because the unit is passively cooled, every aspect of the housing had to act like a heat sink and take heat from the inside of the camera and to the outside. And it had to be as versatile as the camera is. So to begin with, you notice we built this out of extruded aluminum sides. We have 12 gauge aluminum top and bottom. All of this is connected through thermal material to the boards on the inside. So the entire housing acts as an integrated heat sink. And then you notice on the sides, we have these industrial standard dovetail grooves. What these allow you to do is to hook different things to the camera and the camera to other things. So if you want to mount it on a drone, in an ROV, or if you want to put lights or other kinds of, of uh, equipment attached to it, you can do that. And then on the bottom, it has a standard quarter by 20 tripod mount. Thank you for watching this teardown video. If you've got questions, you can reach us at info at sub2r.com. A lot of people have wondered, where do we go from here? Well, the first 24 cameras have been built and we're currently road testing them. As we make some minor adjustments to those cameras, we look to be going into production about the fourth quarter of this year. If you'd like to reserve a camera, you can go to our website, sub2r.com, and follow the links to reserve a camera. Thank you for watching this video.